I've probably spent four days making this video in total now. Two days benchmarking, one day analyzing the data, and another day filming and editing it all. So hopefully this is definitely worth it for you. You guys enjoyed the Ryzen versus 7700K video that I did uh, with the streaming benchmark with Flair Unknown's Battlegrounds. And if you haven't seen that, feel free to check it out. But this one is going to be a little bit different now that X299 is available. I have a 7820X, which is the 8-core variant. I also did a comparison between the uh, 7820X and the 1800X to give you an idea of uh, the main gaming performance and of course the spec difference and I'll leave that in a card up above as well but I thought I would throw into the mix the 7700K as well as the 1800X and the 7820X too. So what games are we going to be testing? Well I'm going to be testing CSGO, GTA 5 and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. With CSGO obviously maxed out settings as high as we can go, GTA 5 is very high settings and uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is uh, basically high as you can go as well. So so uh, hopefully this should be an interesting one. I'm using a GTX 1080 and for the rest of the system everything is identical except for obviously X299 uses quad channel memory. So we're actually using 32 gigs of quad channel memory versus 16 gigs on the Ryzen and 7700K systems. But memory utilization is you know about 8 gigabytes when streaming and gaming so nothing too massive. To make it clear I benchmarked all of the games multiple times per run including both while normal and while streaming so that we can get an idea of the performance performance difference while streaming and obviously the performance difference between the three chips. So hopefully this is uh, you know fairly accurate results. I think as I said I have a good 300 benchmark files now so uh, it was quite a long time analyzing all the data and there's also uh, a few extra bits in the frame time data for the 7700K when it comes to GTA 5 as that was a very surprising result. For streaming and capture I'm using OBS and while I did have a few issues on the Intel systems with Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and all of the systems with CSGO trying to get OBX, OBS to actually capture the game. I am using the X264 CPU encoder preset for both streaming and also recording to disk with a different quality with high as opposed to you know lossless or whatever. Um, so that is probably the worst case scenario for the CPUs but if you are someone who does stream regularly having a very nice co uh, quality copy on your hard drive to uh, you know edit and re-upload to YouTube or whatever afterwards is a very nice thing. So so being able to do that is very useful. So now you know how I did it, let's take a look at the results and I'm really, really surprised by these. Starting off with CSGO, the real big story is the 46 performance loss with the 7700K. The 7820X actually only loses 90% and the 1800X wins with 11% and overall, especially while streaming, the minimums and uh, the 5% maximums are still very much in the, the, the 1800X's favour here. Uh, really very impressive. Now when it comes to GT GTA 5, this does look a little bit more optimized for Intel as both the 7820X and the 7700K both come away uh, just normal uh, numbers at 120 with the 1800X following with 105. Uh, the 7820X actually is the winner in this round with 9% performance loss whereas uh, the 1800X is a little bit higher around the 20s and the 7700K is still around the 40% the mark so kind of crazy. The minimums and the maximums both tell a fairly similar story where the 1800X is still uh, kind of the best value here, but of course the, the 7820X does come away the winner. In Player Unknown's Battlegrounds though, the 1800X lost just one FPS while streaming, so this was really very impressive. Obviously the 7700K is still really struggling here. Again, average minimums and maximums. And the 7820X actually does a pretty good job, only losing a couple of percent, about 8%, uh, whereas obviously the, the 7700K is uh, a rather large uh, loss. As expected, the 7820K, which is a slightly faster chip just in terms of clock speed anyway, uh, does generally speaking perform a little bit better in non-streaming applications. What I was most surprised on was actually that the Ryzen chip did best overall in terms of the, the performance differences in pretty much every game, both minimums, maximums, and average FPS results. Obviously it did include 5% 5 uh, 5 maximum and 5% minimums as well, just to sort of normalize the results for you, so hopefully that's a bit more useful. And as I said I'm, I'm just really surprised. Now I did want to mention uh, as I mentioned at the start some uh, frame time data for the 7700K with the uh, GTA 5 benchmark. Now while I was streaming uh, I really uh, it was a very choppy very nasty overall experience uh, when actually streaming and playing GTA 5 on the 7700K. I actually ended up rerunning the benchmark with uh, GTA 5 the 7700K and streaming uh, after doing all of these graphs because I wanted to capture the frame time data 
data specifically. So what I found was that despite the average FPS being 71 here with the minimums being somewhere in the 50s, I actually found that about 18 seconds out of the 300 seconds, it was running at less than 50 FPS, which is actually a pretty sizable you know, number considering that the average is 71. I also found that for a good 8 seconds of that, it was running at less than 20 FPS, and there was a significant number of frames in the frame time data there that were running at anywhere between 10 and 6 FPS. It really wasn't an enjoyable experience to play and stream with uh, the 7700K, so if you are planning on streaming, and especially if you're planning on streaming and recording to your hard drive as well, then uh, playing something like GTA 5 with, with a 7700K really isn't the best choice. I did actually measure the stream quality as well, but uh, besides my own sort of alt tabbing and stuff like that, there were no drop frames that the actual uh, CPUs themselves dropped. The end, uh, the end file quality for the, the recording version was uh, almost identical, if not identical, and the bitrate volatility was about the same and, uh, across all of the different chips, so not too much to say. Now I should mention that the 7820X is running about £600 or just a little bit less at the time of filming, and of course motherboards for the X platform are about 50 to 100 pounds more expensive than either of the other two platforms. The 1800X is running around about 400 pounds, maybe a little less at the time of filming, which means that it's around about 100 pounds more expensive than the 7700K, but I'd also make it clear that the 1700 or even the 1700X are fairly similarly uh, you know, priced to the 7700K and yet will likely give very, very similar results to the 1800X here, uh, including you know very similar performance uh, numbers non-streaming and while streaming as well. So if you are looking to stream, I think the uh, 1700 or 1700X is a really sweet spot for value for money in terms of brilliant performance and in terms of great streaming capabilities. So what do you think? Which one of these would you rather have and do you stream yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd be very interested to hear from you. If you want to see any more games run on these, as I said, let me know in the comments down below or let me know on Twitter or Facebook as well, at TechTimGB on both. If you want to support these videos, as they, they, this genuinely took me four days to make, I'd really appreciate it if you could use the Amazon or Overclock as you can affiliate links in the description down below. It does genuinely help me out whether you're picking up PC hardware or your garden shed. So if you could use those, that'd be fantastic. And of course, there's a merch link in there as well if you fancy some Tech Team GB stuff or some just generally funny uh, joke kind of tech products. I'll leave some other videos over here for you and some cards up above including the 7820X versus the 1800X in stock gaming benchmark performance and general CPU benchmark performance. And of course, uh, feel free to check out some of the X1099 motherboard reviews or really anything else I have. I have plenty of videos there for you, so feel free to take a look. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe as well. And otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, found it useful and informative, and we'll see you all in the next video.